Hi there, welcome back to Pretty Much Flawless. Today in this video, we're going to be starting a video series on reverse engineering this PCB. This is the first part out of five, so stay tuned. Let's get into it. All right, so here is the PCB we're gonna be redesigning, and here you can see that there's a big hole in it. So what happened was either the trace had too much current flowing through it and melted, or the relay got too hot and that melted the board, and then that shorted out this. So something bad happened. So first of all, for reverse engineering, since this is such a simple board, there's only seven relays and just a whole bunch of QC tabs to connect everywhere else, I think I'm just gonna desolder all these relays, and then that way I'll be able to see the traces better. Most of the traces are intact. It's just on this side right here, it looks like that it was taken out. So let's desolder these. But hold on. Before we even want to start thinking about reverse engineering this PCB, where are we going to have the new one manufactured? Why don't you just use this video's sponsor, PCBWay? Oh, that's a good idea. PCBWay makes high quality custom PCBs for your projects. Design and upload your Gerber files to the website, then place your order and wait a few days for your PCBs to come. And that's not all they do. PCBWay also does CNC machining, 3D printing, and many different materials sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. Check out the website. There will be a link to that in, in the description down below. And if you are looking to make your own affordable PCBs, I would really recommend using PCBWay and look forward to using them again in the future. Right, so after desoldering all the relays, we can see that the traces are intact, which is great. The exceptions being here, this had melted earlier in the board's life, and here, this, had took, this is what took the board out of commission. So this is a two layer PCB. So we have traces on the top and we have traces on the bottom. In this case, there's just one big copper plane on the bottom here. And what that does is has two purposes. One is to provide some cooling for the board. And another thing is that it connects all the neutrals back to our neutral QC tab. So that's good. And then on the top here, these traces connect all the power everywhere where it needs to go which is good. So, if you're dealing with a bigger board or a more complicated board with smaller components, it might be hard to desolder all of them to reverse engineer it. In that case, what you'll have to do is you have to rely on continuity and just test a lot, all the different points to see if you have continuity from one particular connector or one particular pin, which is much more difficult. Fortunately, on this board, we could remove these seven relays and then we can see the traces fairly well which is wonderful so what we can do now is we can create a schematic you could create a schematic on paper what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump right into an EDA program and start creating my schematic from there all right so now we have our EDA program opened up here I'm using KiCad so what we'll do is we'll go into our schematic editor what we'll do is we'll place out some components. So our board has seven relays and 26 QC tabs. So we'll start setting those out. And then after that, we can add all our wires. All right, we'll go over here to add a symbol. And we will search for relays, first of all. So reverse engineering a PCB part two will be more in depth on ordering new components for our new PCB. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make my own symbol and start wiring up from there. And then in future videos in the series, we will worry about the footprints. So, but right now we're just going to draw a new symbol. All right, so then what we'll do is go over here to symbol editor, open that up. And we'll go over here to File, New Library. We'll choose to save this just for the project. And then we will rename it Relay underscore single pole double throw. Good. And you can see that pops up right here. So what we'll do is go New Component. Simple name, we'll call this relay 
underscore single pole double throw. And the designator for relays is K. Everything else should be good. Okay. All right, we have K here. So now what we'll do is we'll add pins. So we need five pins for our relay, two for our coil, one for our common, one for our normally open, and one for our normally closed. So what we'll do is we will set out five pins. All right, now what we can do is go over here and add a rectangle so we can draw a body for our relay here. Good. And what we'll do now is we can go over and add lines and we can make it look like a relay symbol now. All right, there we go. So now what we'll do is we'll go over here and we will click save all changes. And then we'll hit this button right here, add simple to schematic. And here we go. So what we want to do now is we want to lay them out kind of how they are on the board. So we have five relays in the top and then two relays a bit lower. So we'll set those out as shown in the picture here. Okay, and we'll do the same thing again for our QC tabs. We'll add J for our reference designator for our QC tab. And we'll just add two pins. Very good, we'll do the same thing again. Save. Same thing again, we're gonna to wanna to lay out our QC tabs, how they're laid out on the board. So we'll do that. Good, now we have all these laid out. Now we can go back to the board. All right, so we're back. So what we can do now is we can just start finding out where the traces go and adding that to our schematic. So for example, it looks like this connector has the trace going over to this pin on the relay. We'll just do a quick continuity check to test that. And that tests out good, which is good. So what we'll do now is just do a whole bunch of testing and then we'll add that to our schematic. We won't have to worry about trace thickness right now. We'll worry about that later when we're doing PCB design. Right now we're just making a schematic. So let's begin doing that. All right, so now what we can do is begin connecting everything together. So, so since the QC tabs have two pins, I designed our symbol for the QC tabs to have two pins also. So one thing we're gonna have to do is connect those together. So we'll begin connecting everything. All right, one thing I haven't talked about yet is what happens if your trace isn't there? We have two examples here and here. So in this first case here, we can fairly easily see where the trace went. So K1 pin three, that one was connected here. And then K2 pin one was connected here. And then this trace continues down to J21. So now it's fairly simple. This one over here, where there's a hole in the board, that this is going to be a bit more tricky. So it looks like where the trace was is right where the hole is. That'd be a safe assumption just because that's the part that overheated. So we can kind of take a look following this back and 
K7s pin 1 terminal connects over to J25, J26, and J19 for what it looks like. Fortunately, I do have a picture of what it looks like before it melted, and here's the picture. We'll zoom in here, and you can kind of see right here where we have J25, J26, and J19. It looks like all three of these are connected, and then they go right into K7's pin 1 terminal. And that does make sense, because if we look back at our board over here, then that's what we're seeing too with this big hole. So we're, that's a safe assumption, and we will add that into our design. Although this is pretty tricky, though, just because it could potentially connect somewhere else, just because it's melted. This is, it looks like a pretty safe assumption, though, just because you can see where the board is melted. And yeah, so we'll add this into our design, and it should work out good. All right, so everything's wired up now, and after doing a quick double check, everything looks good. So that's good. Thanks for watching this video today. Hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe. That would really help my channel. And stay tuned for the other four parts of this series. And I'll see you next time.